We have people coming into the country or trying to come in. We're stopping a lot of them. But we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. Oh, Trump called all immigrants animals. Print it, send it off to all the major news organizations. Actually, in context, he's only referring Hey, the resistance doesn't have time for fact-checking. Everyone knows that the best way to deal with a serial liar is with a steady stream of lies and misrepresentations of your own. This is the Trump era. Get with it. Oh, photographic evidence of inhumane treatment of immigrant children by the Trump administration. Like, share. Yeah, this will show those Trump-loving f that Trump's a monster. Maybe I should actually read it now that I've shared it to fit my pre-existing narrative. Wait, those photos are from 2014? When Obama was president? <laughs> delete, 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 delete. I mean, if Obama did it, there's probably some explanation, right? It's only newsworthy if Trump did it. Let's see. We need something to represent this separation crisis at the border for our magazine cover. Hey, here's that picture of that crying Honduran girl at the border that people on social media seem to be pointing to. Let's do a sh Photoshop job of her looking up at Trump. The original version of this story misstated what happened to the girl in the photo after she was taken from the scene. The girl was not carried away screaming by U.S. Border Patrol agents. Her mother picked her up, and the two were taken away together. The June 12th photograph of a two-year-old Honduran girl became the most visible symbol of the ongoing immigration debate in America for a reason. Under the policy enforced by the administration, prior to its reversal this week, those who crossed the border illegally were criminally prosecuted, which in turn resulted in the separation of children and parents. Our cover and our reporting capture the stakes of this moment. After the events of this week, I'm feeling much less scripty and much more ranty, so let's switch up the format a little bit. Any reasonable person can see that Trump lies a lot. Like, he traffics in misrepresentations, he bends the truth, and he just outright lies. He just makes up all the time. I mean, the guy was an Obama birther, so he traffics in conspiracy theories. He had Sean Spicer go out and say that his inauguration had the biggest crowd ever, and it demonstrably didn't. Like, he says things that are just demonstrably false. You can just go look it up. It's actually not clear to me whether Trump actually believes the things he says, in which case I guess they're not lies because he doesn't intend to deceive. Maybe he's just that deluded of a person, or it could be that Trump knows that the things that he's saying are false. I really don't know. I mean, he, he won the election and then he complained about millions of illegals voting because he lost the popular vote. I mean, that's a man's ego getting in the way of his grip on reality. I mean, politicians lie. We all know politicians lie. They stretch the truth. They bend the truth. Hillary did it too. But I do think that Trump has an unusually disconnected relationship with the truth. Unfortunately, the tenuous relationship with truth that Trump has seems to be contagious. At the top of this video, I gave you three examples of the media just getting things wrong. There were the pictures of the immigrant children that circulated that were from 2014 that Trump had nothing to do with, but they were passed off as being part of what the Trump administration is doing. There was the animals comment that was widely reported as Trump talking about immigrants in general, and if you look at the context, it is just utterly clear, you know, verifiable that he was talking about MS-13. And then there was this Time Magazine cover where they, they just totally got it wrong. This girl wasn't separated from her mother. She wasn't taken away screaming. She, her mother picked her up and walked off with her. So why do I bring all these things up? Am I trying to draw an equivalence between these two things? Not necessarily. Honestly, before Trump was elected president, I didn't think the media was this bad. I mean, I was one of those who thought Fox News was bad and, you know, maybe extremely far left organizations were bad, daily costs and stuff like that. But the middle, you know, of the road, like CNN, and they, uh, you know, they may have leaned a certain way, or NPR, they may lean a certain way, but they weren't terrible. They weren't just fabricating things. They weren't lying or really stretching the truth for an agenda, at least as bad as they are now. I don't know if Trump has exposed the media for being this way or if he's actually made it worse. I really don't know the answer to that question. All I know is right now, it's amazing to me how little the media seems to care about the truth. They have, they see Trump as an emergency. They want to press on the gas. They don't want to look for facts when they report things. If something fits the resistance narrative, they quickly publish it. They characterize it a certain way. And a lot of times these things come out to be outright fabrications or, you know, twistings of the truth. It's just, it's terrible. Honestly, I don't even know who to trust. Even the Associated Press reported that Trump was talking about immigrants in general when he made that animals comment and they had to retract it the associated press this isn't an especially partisan organization they're not even like cable news they're just they're just supposed to report bare facts and what gets to me here is that 
part of the resistance against Trump is supposed to be a reassertion of the importance of facts, right? It's mocking the idea that there can be such a thing as alternative facts. There are things you can demonstrate. There are facts and figures, right? There are things you can look up and there are things that are more gray. Even a lot of the mainstream news organizations have come up with these slogans. I mean, Washington Post has democracy dies in darkness. The New York Times has just facts, no alternatives. There, that's a clear allusion to Kellyanne Conway's famous alternative fact speech that she made, I think in connection with Trump um, making up these figures about his inauguration attendance. So it's a tenet of the resistance. It's supposed to be something important they're stressing, that facts matter, that propaganda is dangerous that spinning things and, and spewing blatant falsehoods is dangerous to, to democracy. It disables people from being able to engage the issues and know the truth and uh, act politically for, in, in their own interests against the government. But the same people who are pushing this movement seem to be losing their grip on the importance of truth. They seem to be putting fact-checking second. But if truth really matters, it should matter regardless of your narrative. It should matter regardless of whether you're pro-Trump or anti-Trump, whether you're pro-Trump or pro-Hillary. It doesn't matter. It's good for democracy. It's good for critical thinking. It gives people the tools they need to actually know what's going on and act in a reasonable and informed way. It keeps debates honest. It keeps politicians honest. It keeps governments from doing terrible things without us knowing about it. This is true regardless of who's in power. And I'm not saying the media is as bad as Trump all the time, at least. Although, honestly, I'm starting to doubt more media every day. I mean, it's gotten so bad that on my Facebook feed, I've liked every news organization from the most radical left to the most radical right, and they all just sort of spit out on my news feed. And I do, I do that so I can see all the different ways the stories are presented, and as well as all the different stories that they choose to present. And then I try to figure out where the truth is. So maybe the media is as bad as Trump now. I don't know. Uh, that might be too strong, but... It's definitely getting worse, or it's definitely bad right now. Maybe it was always worse, and Trump just exposed it. All I know is there's a deep inconsistency between standing up for truth, for facts, resisting this idea of alternative facts, and then being willing to bend the truth as much as possible for your own end. That, that drives me nuts. It's not only inconsistent, it's also strategically stupid. Trump says enough dumb, inaccurate, and false things that you don't need to help him out. You don't need to give him more ammo to fight the media. One of Trump's big talking points is that the media is one of the main enemies of the people. A lot of people say Trump attacks the press. Um, he tries to mitigate the, our, our reliance in the press, and that's bad for democracy. But then the press turns around and they undermine their own credibility. They almost they prove him right, basically. So this plays into Trump's anti-media narrative. It gets people on his side. It makes people sympathetic to him. So if you're really anti-Trump and you have principles, you should be infuriated when people get facts wrong when it allows for a news cycle where Trump can say, aha, see the media, they don't, they don't care about you. They just, they're just out to get the American people. They're out to dupe you. They're, they have their own interests in mind. They have their own agendas that are divorced from reality. And you should just trust me. So it just, it, it just really gets me. Trump doesn't need any help. And truth matters regardless of who it is. I wish the media would take those things to heart. Don't become what Trump says you are unless you already are that, in which case, give up, do something else, burn it down and do something else with your life. You, you shouldn't be handling the news. That's where I'm at this week. What do you think? Do you think the media has always been this bad? Or do you think Trump's made it worse? Or has Trump just exposed the way it's always been? And what do you think about this format? Do you like this more discussion, ranty based format? Or do you like the more scripted, carefully crafted pieces where I have pretty much exactly what I'm going to say already written down? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Kyle. Thanks for watching. And until next time, see you.